I'm getting too old for this cheer. And that's just a taste of the amazing crab migration on Christmas Island. Truly a sight to behold. Well, that's all the time we have today. But remember, if the Yuletide spirit you'll want to grab, make sure you save some time for crab. Good night. Time for Crab is brought to you by the generous support of the Foundation for Carcinization Edutainment and viewers like you. Coming up tonight on CFUT, get into the holiday spirit with an especially CFUT Christmas hosted by Bacon Rothersworth and Lindex 1-7 with extended RAM bank. Featuring Art Instructions Art Instruction with Arthur Instruction. Someone learns a valuable Christmas lesson on Magic Land. And Deborah Thibodeau brings us some public feedback. All this and more. Hark! The Herald Angel sings! And welcome! to an especially CFUT Christmas special with me, Bacon Rothersworth. Look to my left. It's my partner in everything. Life, career, love, Lindex. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, flesh hammers. Christmas is a wonderful time of year. So many amazing things are in the air. Carols, discount electronics, and cookies. What's your favorite kind of cookie, Lindex? Strictly necessary performance cookies. Mmm, delicious. We have many festivities to show off to you tonight, so let's kick it off with the CFUT House Band. That was music. It certainly was, Lindex. I'm glad the new sound card I installed is working adequately. It is. I can now identify over 5,000 Christmas carols. Wow! I can't even name five Christmas carols. Executing program carol.exe. Jingle bells. Away in a manger. Oh, um, Beautiful star of Bethlehem. Uh, coming up next, Children go where it's I Art Instructions, Christmas Private song, Art Instruction, AKA with Arthur Instruction. on an open fire, or Merry Christmas to you. Do you hear what I hear? Hi everyone! Welcome to Art Instructions Private Art Instruction, featuring me, Arthur Instruction. You can call me Private Art. Today, we are going to be doing holiday themed art. Last time, we asked you to call the station's answering machine and leave a message with the kind of holiday themed art you'd like me to add to our drawing. I've got my easel, some paper, a marker, very important, and we're ready to go. Are you ready to go? Grab your marker. Let's do it. Hi, Mr. Art. It's winter time, so you should draw lots of snow and also hot chocolate because I like it, but it's very hot sometimes. Thank you, Sophie. Sophie, thank you. That's great. I, I love hot chocolate too. Let's, let's start by drawing uh, a little snow. The best part about having hot chocolate is when it's nice and cold out and then put a place to put that hot chocolate and we'll draw in. There, looks pretty good. 
I can't wait to have some of that. Dear Private Art, my name is Davy, and can you please draw a saber-toothed tiger with great big fangs? Thanks. Sure, David. After all, the holidays have always existed, and therefore, it's important to have fun with all sorts of animals throughout history. Fangs are hard. They have to point the right way or they don't seem right. But, there we go. A good tiger. Hi, my name is Ryan, and this is my favorite holiday. Making jack-o'-lanterns, trick-or-treating. It's the best. So can you draw a really spooky picture of a ghost or a Frankenstein? Did we not pick that up? For... That's not, like, leftover. Sure. You, you bet. I'll add some holiday elements. Jack-o'-lantern seems like a good start, after all. And maybe we'll make it festive. And you know what? I'll just add... Yeah. Yeah. Why not? The holidays are inclusive. Hello, Mr. Art. Could you please draw me a kitty detective solving the mystery of why my mom says I need to go to bed at 7.30 even though it's the holiday break and I don't have to go to school? You bet. A kitty detective solving mysteries. Maybe we can use the saber-toothed tiger as the kitty's companion. Yeah. Kitty... How do we make it a detective? Ah, yeah, like this. That's how you make it a detective. And we'll just have to use our imaginations um, for 7.30. Excellent. Arthur, it's Steve. Look, man, it's been a rough couple months, and I could really use another loan. Your producer only let me through if I asked for a drawing, so, uh, how about 40 bucks and a bottle of Quaaludes? Hint, hint. Steve! I thought he said he needed another lung, and I'm glad that all he needs is 40 bucks. It's the holiday season, and giving is important, so let's give Steve a stocking, and then let's... Let's fill it. Let's fill it with the things he's asked for. Yeah. Good. Well, Steve, you hang in there. Hi, Mr. Art. This is Ryan again. I'm sorry that I asked you to draw the wrong thing before. My dad says Frankenstein was the doctor's name, so I should have asked for a spooky ghost and Frankenstein's monster. Thanks, Art. That's fine. We Ryan, we can we can fix that. We can we can definitely here, you know what? I kinda had a sense it's what you wanted anyway. But Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. Still yeah, weird. Guten Tag, Herr Instruction. Could you please draw a picture of me receiving my deserved dried apricots and chocolate from St. Nicholas while my brother Jürgen is punished by the Krampus with his birch rod for teasing our dog Wilhelm? I didn't catch your name, young man, but yeah, you... Um, God, we're kind of... Uh, okay, there's some room over here for the apricot on the... Maybe there? Yeah, there's still room there. Okay. Okay, and the Krampus. Krampus. Um, Krampus is... Oh, you know what? Actually, we'll just... We'll just give Frankenstein a costume. That's believable. And that's what's important when you use your imagination. Hi, Artie, it's Rhonda. 
big oopsie. We forgot to get something for your nephew, Bert, and I just don't know what to do because I know he's going through the problem years, but I just can't handle another family dinner where he looks like a damp cat who wandered into the hairspray factory. See if you can grab something downtown on your way home. Love you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Rhonda. I normally don't put family in my drawings, but let's... Maybe Bert will think this is a treat. Let's draw Bert. There we go. A more idealized sense of who Bert is as a person. And maybe he'll see this and he'll want to talk to us again. Do we have any more callers? No? Okay, well, this has been a great drawing that covers all of the holidays of the season and uh oh right don't you always have to remember sign your work and that'll do it for this episode of art instructions private art instruction featuring me arthur instruction you can call me private art next time we'll be exploring a more free form attitude with abstract art and cubism so leave me a message if there's something that you want to see in a cubist style take care hey great muscles thanks, thanks. how do you get them why, it's the new workout that's making waves muscle touch. It's the workout that lets you get fit just by touching muscles. But what if I don't have anyone to help me touch my muscles? Well, then you need the Muscle Buddy. Because I love to muscle touch, even when Susan's not around, to help me touch those tricky muscles that are dangerous to touch alone. Training to reach level E5 is no joke, Jerry. The Muscle Buddy's soft yet firm artificial finger will give you results as quickly and as comfortably as if you were having a real person touch your muscles. And the extendable pole mechanism allows you to touch even your most distant muscles safely. I was paid to be in this commercial. Really? Your muscles are looking great, Susan. That's thanks to the Krav Maga. And the Muscle Buddy. To order your Muscle Buddy, call now, 1-555-FIT-SPOT, or send $19.95 plus $4.50 for shipping and handling to this address. Order now and we'll throw in a second Muscle Buddy for just $19.95. CFUT and Dulcimer Warehouse present the Tri-City Coral Smackdown. 20 choirs, one organ, and many bars held. No silent nights here. You'll ding-dong merrily, not just on high, but over the staff entirely. The basses will bop, the altos will dong, and your breathing will be staggered. Silent night in the original German. O oh, Tenenbaum in English. Warning, you may not be able to handle these messiahs. Come all ye faithful this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday at the Agrodome. Tickets $10 in advance or $10 at the door. While shepherds watch their flocks with wandering awe, zither carol, program end. Welcome back. I learned so many things while you were gone. 5,000 things. And I even retained some of them. I can repeat the program. No, 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 Lindex, that's, that's okay. S say, what are you hoping to find under the Christmas tree this season? As an artificial life form, I have no desires. But if I did, it would be a scarf. Well, Index, I was saving this for Christmas Day, but... Ooh, Cashmere, how did you know? Well, let's just say I had a little bit of Yule technology. And speaking of granting Christmas wishes, it's time to make more come true with Bruce O'Waffle's Christmas Wismish. Thank you, Bacon and Lindex. It's me, Bruce O'Waffle, and welcome to Christmas Wishmas, the segment where we ask you to send your wishes into the studio and we do our best to sprinkle a little bit of festive cheer around our community. 
I'm gonna start with our first letter, which means it's time to get elbow deep inside the desire box. Dear Christmas Wishmas, my name is Terrence. I am seven years old and I like video games. For my Wishmas this year, I'm asking for a video game's home console with a second paddle so my friends can play too. Thank you, Terrence. That sounds lovely, Terrence. So we're going to send you a copy of my autobiography, Waffles Up. It's the story of my meteoric lateral move to the world of television presenting. Thanks so much for your letter. Back into the desire box. Oh, what have we found here? Dear Wishmans, I'm Stacy, I'm nine, and my brother Pete is seven, and we would like an Action Jeffrey playset, a Click Brick starter box, a stuffy hamster, a real hamster, a small stuffy hamster for a real hamster, a case of oh no cookie sandwich cookies, and a spaceship. Thank you, and Merry Wishmas. Wow, Stacy, that's a big list. Now, I don't know if we can fulfill every wish on that list, but we are gonna send you and Pete each a copy of my autobiography, Waffles Up. It's the simple story of a man, but this time, that man is me. Desire box time. Dear Wishmas, my grandpa's getting older, so he can't see that good anymore. For Christmas, we'd like to get him one of those real big 22-inch color TVs so he can keep yelling at his sports. Signed, Ethan, age 11. Wow, what a sweet letter, Ethan. And so kind of you to use your Christmas wish to help someone less fortunate than yourself. Which is why we're going to be sending you a copy of my autobiography, Waffles Up. Available now at agreeable retailers or the back of my car if you see me around town. But also, we will be sending your grandpa a copy of my autobiography, Waffles Up, audiobook edition. I do all the voices. Well, thanks everybody for joining us for Christmas Wishmas. I hope we were able to sprinkle some holiday cheer around the town. I've been Bruce Waffle. Back to you, Bacon and Lindex. Thank you, Bruce. And thank you for the copy of the book you gave us. We use it to prop up my external hard drive. You know, Lindex, my favorite part of the holiday season is going to sleep with visions of sugar plums in my head. I dream of electric sugar plums. What is a sugar plum? I don't know, but you know who might know? Franklin Turk with Dreams on the Street. Hello, I'm Franklin Turk, and what do I dream about? Wreaths. It's that time of year again. Time for the axial tilt of the Earth to return back to its 12 o'clock position, thus making a perfect circle. And that means it's time for wreaths. Wreaths on the street. A beautiful spruce ring, classically 360 degrees in total, tastefully frosted and protected behind a glass storm door. Beautiful. Next wreath. A full circle of felines, tastefully fronting a ring of poinsettias. Beautiful, welcoming, and warm, and protected from the cold by a strong storm door. Next wreath! A non-conventional wreath! Eschewing natural materials for Danish ingenuity. 
It looks smart with its handsome bow tie, and yet is strong, able to withstand the elements, and is therefore able to stand on its own on this strong storm garage door. No more reefs! And with that wreathy roundup complete, we find ourselves back where we started on this circuitous journey, completing our own circular tradition. I remain, as always, Franklin Turk, on the street. Oh, wealth upon the shelf, just what the heck's your deal? Should I fund a round A or finance my next meal? You watch me as I try to do just what you say, to grind and hustle up myself a long profit runway. What is wealth on the shelf? It's a story about a fun-filled tradition of maximizing monetary return and a magical investor from Sand Hill Road. Every fourth quarter, the investors fly to garages and dorm rooms around the world. They sit, watch, and listen to pitches, then fly back to Sand Hill Road to report to the hedge fund managers. That's how hedge funds decide which startups are capable of being bought by bigger companies and those that only benefit the public good. In the morning, the investors shake off the hangovers and make some business decisions. Little founders love to search for them. Some investors are adventurous. Some are capricious. Others are racist and bigoted. Some have a lot of ideas about how a business should be run. But they always wear a blazer over a t-shirt and jeans. And arrive with an NDA in a special envelope from their law firms. Adopt your own wealth on a shelf today. This Christmas, give yourself the gift of sleep with a brand new Snooze County jelly bed. Everything is on sale. Just $2.99.99 buys your choice of any of our high-quality jelly beds. Choose from traditional wood frames or sleep in style with our new line of ultra-contemporary jelly bed frames, starting at just $5.99.99. Guaranteed leak-proof, filled with natural and hygienic animal-based jellies, a Snooze County jelly bed never needs to be flipped, rotated, or autoclaved. Snooze County jelly beds, 3700 Gonchman Avenue. Hello boys and girls, and welcome to Magic Land. Today we have a special treat for you. I will be reading from Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, and the Magic Land puppet players will be acting out some scenes for you. So, let's begin. Marley was dead to begin with. There is no doubt whatsoever about that. The register of his burial was signed by the clergyman the clerk, the undertaker, the chief mourner. Scrooge signed it, and Scrooge's name was good, upon change for anything he chose to put his hand to. Old Marley was dead as a doornail. And yet, that night, while at home, eating a saucepan of gruel, Scrooge heard a clanking noise. Deep down below, as if someone were dragging a heavy chain over the casks of the wine merchant cellar. Uh, Robert Marley? No, it's, it's Bottleby. No, it's Robert Marley, my old business partner who is dead. No, it's Bottleby. And I always bring a certain jus de vivre to the scene. Yes, and also you've brought chains. No, you've noticed the Versace. Wow, they look uncomfortable and heavy. Oh no, they're quite smooth. Oh, okay. Um, well, they they worry me. Oh, good. I was trying to bring a bit of a more eyes wide shut vibe this time. You know Kubrick? Nice guy. No, uh, no, I don't. Is he another uh, businessman in this town? No, he's dead. So are you. Oh, spirit, it is. Stop that. It is so difficult to understand 
what messages you bring, but I infer that you are not the last ghost who I will be meeting this evening. Oh yeah, script says there's gonna be like three more runs of this. Great. I mean, no, I'm no spirit. Why? I don't believe you. I'm. You're just a piece of undigested cheese. Ah, I've got to drop some cheese, I guess. Simon. Yes, yes. As Marley's ghost said to Scrooge, that there will be three more ghosts. And so, later that night, Scrooge awoke. It was so dark that looking out of bed, he could scarcely distinguish the transparent window from the opaque walls of his chamber, until suddenly the church clock told a deep, dull, hollow, melancholy one. Oh, God, it's you. I mean, it's you, the spirit whose coming was foretold to me. You know, this production is really reminding me of the time I understudied from Michael Caine. You were in The Muppet Christmas Carol? No, no, the Italian job. Though, I did get to visit the set of A Muppet Christmas Carol. Shared a bento box with Gonzo. That's an indirect kiss in some cultures. Uh, gross. Uh, but that's something that happened from your past. But what can you tell me about my past, oh, spirit of Christmas past, which is you? Oh, I've got lots of good stories about what you did last night. No, 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 no. Me, my past as Ebenezer Scrooge, that is me, and you are the ghost of Christmas past. Oh, right, you're Scrooge. That means I need to get the costume for the ghost of Christmas future. No, I, you know, hey, Simon, I think I'm just going to make an executive call that we skip the next two ghosts, because I think they're both probably also Bartleby. No, I made him really sexy like you wanted. I, nobody wanted that. That's just something you did. I, uh, okay. Uh. God, no, that's. Okay. Uh, so, Scrooge woke up the next day. And yes, the bedpost was his own. The bed was his own. The room was his own. And best and happiest of all, the time before him was his own. To make amends in. Oh, what a beautiful day. I hope I haven't missed it. <coughs> You're not a ghost this time. You there, boy. Man. Whatever. What day is it? Like the 20th? No one's a story. Oh. Hanukkah? I, I honestly understudied for your part. And you should still know what day it is. Mm. I bet it is Christmas Day. I haven't missed it. Oh, wonderful. I'm as light as a feather. Oh, I know what we'll do. You, can you go to the butcher shop and buy the enormous prized goose? And then we're going to take it over to see Bob Cratchit, who's probably also played by you, and we're going to have ourselves an enormous Christmas feast. That'll all be on you. I'm intermittently fasting. Great, because I've learned to keep Christmas in my heart all the year round. Ew, it'll get moist in there. Oh, 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 and uh, did Tiny Tim die? Oh, I'm pretty sure he's tiptoeing through the tulips as we speak. Not the ukulele man, the one from the story. Oh, uh... Alive? Great, good, okay, we got there. Merry Christmas, everybody. God help us, everyone. I... The end. Thank you for joining us, boys and girls, and I hope you've learned a little something about the holiday season and the Italian job. Get your skates on, boys! Is Michael Caine here? Santa! You jolly son of a bitch! All right, next up we've got Edible Sand. Of course, this is FDA approved. My good friend, Frederick Domino's Delivery. Uh, ate it breakfast, lunch, and dessert. Uh, edible. You can eat it. You shouldn't. Uh, he did. 
and it cost them dearly. We miss them every day. That's going to be on B tier. Horny Klezmer. Oh, this has got to be an easy A for me. My buddies down at the fire hall can't get enough of it. They didn't appreciate my loitering. They said I was getting away with their trucks. I say, hey, Pally, where's the fire? And they gave me nothing. I was doing great crowd work. These anchovies weren't biting. Their loss. B tier. A lot of competition in the B tier. A lot of competition in the B tier. This one just says, F when did I write this? I like my moxie. It's got to be at least C tier on that one. Uh, bigger gun. I think they make those. I think they make, they call them cannons. C tier for cannons. I think it could be B tier for bigger gun. I'm, football. This already exists. I don't know what I was thinking about, but I like football, so I'm going to give it an F. Powdered wine. This one won me a lot of brownie points with the misses. In fact, I tried to mix brownies with them. You know, a little special brownie. <laughs> Couldn't eat solids for half a year. B tier. Avocado toast. This is just two words put together. <laughs> what was I thinking? It's gotta be a D. It's gotta be a D. A spatula that winks at you. This is a good gag gift. Definitely not better than my whoopee cushion that leaks your address, but it's up there. Kids will love it. Mothers will love it. Mothers with kids will love it. C tier. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, this one's an idea. I find the most billowy shirt I have. I come over to your house. I squat over your dog on all fours and I cover them up. It's like a dog house inside, like a dog vacation home. Cats too, but I'm not liable if they get squished. Gotta be B tier. This one's made me hundreds of dollars. Oh, here we go. I come over to your house while you're on vacation and I water your carpet. Great idea. Easy B. Next. Gum that when you chew it, it gives you the winner of the next hockey game. This doesn't work. We tried everything. Technology just it isn't there. Only works for baseball. Useless. F. Okay, I go to your office and tell all your co-workers you're one inch taller than you actually are, and they don't question it. Here's the thing. They questioned every single second of why I was there. Who are you, sir? Do you have a badge to be here? Why are you insisting that so-and-so is X and Y feet tall? Didn't work. D. Pet starfish, C tier. Uh, the happiest day of your life being your wedding. This is more of an idea, C tier. A cube that hums and purrs, C tier. A car with four wheels? We've already done this. I did this last week. We can't keep, I'm sorry folks for the unprofessionalism, but we can't keep, we can't put them on the same tier. Oh, a car with five wheels. Now we're talking. We're getting somewhere on our car with five wheels. <laughs> oh, F tier. Sex on the beach, parentheses, not the drink. Yeah, this sounds great. There's sand everywhere, but it adds to the ambience. Ambli it I don't know how to say it. The firefighters wouldn't tell me they burned the bridge at this time. And I said, burn the bridge? Isn't that your guy's job? Hey, but they didn't give me nothing. They've never given me anything. Sex on the beach. Easy A. Oh, here we go. A top contender for this list. A radio that periodically screams, martial law, martial law, just to keep you on your toes and to keep you in tune with the happenings of your local governments. That's an easy, that's, that's top tier. Now, will it overthrow menthol cigarettes for naughty children? Tough to say. Only time will tell, only future ranks will tell. Okay, and that's it for tonight with our tier list of business ideas I've had, most likely to be responsible for the dissolution of my most recent marriage. I am, of course, Frank Ranklin. You have been watching Frank's Ranks. And, uh, keep it A.
Welcome back to Gardening with Greg. My producers would like me to apologize to you about the earlier segment, how to protect your tomatoes from winter frost, which we shot three weeks ago, and I told them to run it then, as opposed to wait until later in the month. But hey, if you could have used that information, why not go out to your garden right now and sift through the snow and maybe get yourself a nice little frozen salad together for uh, tonight's meal, huh? Excellent. As you can see, we are in a decidedly rural area, about almost, actually a little over 300 meters away from the nearest unnamed Christmas tree farm. Because this episode is, you guessed it, about Christmas trees. Now, I haven't had a tree in my house for like eight years or so, which is cool because we just get a roll of craft paper. I give it to my daughter, Sophia. I tell her to draw a huge tree on it and then we hang it from the ceiling of the living room and pop mini lights through the back of it. So, you know, gives you that tree feel without actually having to have a tree in the house. And, you know, she cried about it for a while. First time we did it, she was like at it for like an hour, Jesus. But like, really, kids can self-soothe if you just leave them to it and they're fine. And she likes it when she saw the presents under the tree. Who wouldn't like that kind of thing? But uh, it's not terribly environmentally sound to just keep pulling up trees and putting them in your house. So I always like to explore more alternative, responsible options. Hey, you want to know why we're not at the tree farm? Because my producer, Kellogg, and the law are weirdly insistent that I am no longer allowed on the other side of that fence. You see, a few years ago, I'd been drinking. Unrelated aside, did you know that you could grow peyote cactus in Hardy Zone 8? You can. So I'd been drinking, got a little too into my cups, let's say, and had a great idea. I maintain was a great idea, very responsible idea. I borrowed the CFUT van. I left a note. I drove to the tree farm at 3 a.m., didn't want to disturb anybody. And I liberated about 30 of those trees, took them out to the middle of the forest, and reburied them somewhere where no one's going to find them. And they're still alive, thanks to me. You will never find where I buried those trees. Anyway, the sun's gone down. It's a moonless night. I can see Scott's already locking the gate, and they really need to change that lock. You guys warm up the van. Oh man, I can already see about 20 trees with my name on it. Kellogg, can you spell the word accomplice? Welcome back. Lindex and I were just discussing who's on our shopping list this season. If I had parents, I would buy them things to demonstrate my filial piety. But Lindex, you do have parents. The Atari 2600 in the garage. Dad. And that decommissioned military satellite that my lawyer, Evan the Crowbar Brown, suggested that I don't talk about publicly. Other dad. So, Lindex, what are you getting them? Weapons. We can't do that again. We figured that's a bad idea. Hee <laughs> hee uh, But you know what's a good idea? Listening to Sequoia Beargrass's gift guide. Thank you, Bacon and Lindex. And Lindex, I love your dress. Hello, fellow pilgrims. As we're all no doubt aware, it's a very special season. We are further away now from the sun's blessings than at any other time of year. And in the absence of its warm embrace, Mother Gaia's bosom has been rendered frozen and lifeless. But winter isn't just about long, cold nights haunted by the twin specters of death and famine. It's also about capitalism and presents. So on to the gifts. First up, one of my own specially blended, divinely inspired, and patent pending tinctures in an all new holiday formulation that features balsam, tangerine oil, coriander, and a very special formulization of lysergic acid. Spritz some into the air to enhance your holiday bliss. Rub it into your skin if you experience seasonal dryness. Or if you have a case of the real stubborn winter blues, take two tabs and call me in the morning. Next, something you can give children, a healing amethyst. Children love shiny things that they can bludgeon each other with, and parents love amethyst because it promotes serenity and calm, and its smooth, polished surface can be easily cleaned of fingerprints, food residue, 
and blood. And finally, if you don't have a special loved one that's hard to shop for, why not give them a gift from Mother Gaia's very body itself? Enriched with organic materials and minerals, dirt is a healthy, natural gift with a huge variety of purposes. You can grow food, you can mix it with water to make a facial mask, or my favorite use, sprinkle it onto the sole of an enemy shoe and cast a hearty curse. All these gifts and so many more are available at my sister Terry's bi-monthly garage sale or my temporary storefront at Pine Center Mall. Open during construction. Back to you, Bacon and Lindex. Thanks, Sequoia. That was educational. Sure. Bacon, would you agree that knowledge is one of the most important things? Almost as important as holiday togetherness. Bacon, the director is shaking his head at you oh. again. Uh, which must mean that it's time for our legally mandated municipal politics coverage. On today's calendar, the calendar. Hello, and welcome back to Public Feedback, moderated by me, Deborah Thibodeau. I'm Deborah Thibodeau. And I would like to say to any viewers that are joining us now, this is hour three of our meeting seeking public comment on adopting a new municipal calendar system. I will caution viewers, however, that there was some confusion whether this was an in-camera meeting or an on-camera meeting, and our legal counsel has said that we can proceed as long as nobody from town council is pictured on camera. Before we invite our next speaker up, I would like to once again extend our heartfelt thanks to Mrs. Laura Snertz for letting us use her basement while town council chambers are being fumigated. Our next speaker is Mr. Hank Bastard. Hi, I'm Hank Bastard. Okay, Mr. Bastard, please tell us what your idea for a new municipal calendar should be. In my many years of hosting undetermined sightings, I have a long list of evidence of humans and aliens working together in harmony. And long ago did we stray from the path, and it's very evident that there is a superior calendar system hidden within their teachings. I see. And what does the superior calendar system entail? I don't know yet. What I'm proposing is a modest budget allocated by the council to me, where I will put together a team to uncover these mysteries. And will you be needing to leave municipal boundaries? Almost certainly. Due to my conservative estimate, it will be probably 10 to 15 years of painstaking research to uncover the truth. Do you have any spoilers for us that you could share ahead of time to get an idea of what you will be uncovering? No. But looking back through the ancient teachings, imagine how glorious a future of a calendar of their design could be. It's very hard to imagine that without a starting point. How many days would your calendar have? No idea. The aliens likely have a different perception of time than we do. Therefore, whatever they suggest, we should just adopt. This may result in a strange idea of what a minute, an hour, or even a day could look like. But truly, they're probably smarter than we are. I see. Do you have any proposed budget ideas for this expedition, Mr. Bastard? A conservative estimate would be half a million dollars per year. Thank you, Mr. Bastard. That was a fascinating proposal. I've been passed a note from council, uh, and they're wondering if um, it could be done perhaps any faster or any cheaper. Cheaper? Certainly not. Faster? That depends on the aliens. Um, council's follow-up question. The maximum they can offer you is $17 a day in a meal per diem. Sold. Thank you, Mr. Bastard. Please let the minutes reflect that agreed upon per diem for him. Our next speaker is Mr. Kurt McGurder from the International Siblinghood of Construction Workers. Deborah? Mr. McGurder. I'm Kurt. I'm a simple construction man, and I've been working on this fine city for many, many years. 
But what irks me every single year is when construction shuts down during the winter months of the year. So, I propose we get rid of winter altogether. And thus, I institute four new months. Construction months. Constructsember. Constructuary. Constructuary. Karch. I see, and these would replace our traditional months, correct? Yes, we would still get the regular year, so we don't, we don't want to go encroaching on any of those other months that are very so popular amongst the youths and the, the, the kids these days, but stuff's got to get built. Under the current calendar, we do not do any construction between December and March because of the ice and snow. How would the weather change in December and Consembuary, consembuary, and, and, and karch? Oh, constructuary, yes, you're correct. Well, well, Deborah, I believe that we should be extracting money from less important civic uh, ideas. Get rid of Dan's topiary barn. We don't need nearly as much topiary and plants all amongst it. Reinvest it into the construction firms, where we will build a weather machine to get rid of winter completely. No more snow, no more frost, just blistering heat. Twelve beautiful months a year. Fascinating suggestion. How soon do you think, based on the construction of your magical weather machine, could you roll out the new months? Now I need to be clear, Deborah. This is science. No magic involved. I can't explain how it goes because I'm a tradesperson and I didn't take any science, so I will not divulge how that works. However, if we need a timeline, I can probably have it done by Karch. Oh, Karch, so soon. No, not this Karch, next Karch. But maybe the second of Constructuary, if we're lucky. Oh, I see. All right, so we're looking at a pretty extended timeline here for this new calendar that you are proposing. Uh, and will there be economic benefit to the city to completely altering our natural weather pattern? Why, absolutely, Deborah. I feel that with it being hot 12 months a year, tourism will go way up. It'll be hot. It'll be summery. The beaches will be nice. Of course, it'll be interrupted a little bit by the construction. No one will be able to get in and out, but, you know, it'll be great. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Regerter. That is a fascinating proposal. Oh, council has passed me uh, a note, and uh, it says that um, we don't actually pay for the topiary barn. That's an independent private business. Um, and so if you have beef with Dan, you'll have to settle it personally. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. I'm coming for you, Dan. Our next speaker is local broadcaster and my CFUT colleague, Franklin Turk. Hello, Mr. Turk. I am excited to hear your proposal. Hello, town. It comes to mind that no one is currently thinking about the teens. Teens who perceive time just as we would, or perhaps more so. Therefore, I propose a system of calendaring which will be advantageous to the teens, both in their day-to-day -day lives and their curricular activities. And what changes would you make to the calendar to accommodate the youth of our city? Two months. One for work, one for play. I see. Do you have proposed names for these months? And which months would they eat in order to become triumphant? There will be the work week, which will now be extended into a full half year, encompassing all of their study and part-time job activities, followed by the month of teen time. Oh, so reducing our 12 months to just two. Exactly. Much easier to keep track of and much more exciting because you never know which month comes next. Would they not just alternate one after the other because there's only two of them? Teens crave stimulus and nothing is more stimulating than finding out the night before that you're in for six months of work or play. I see. Thank you, Mr. Turk. That is a fascinating suggestion. No more suggestions. All right, well, thank you, Franklin. I've been passed another note from council. And, um, oh, they say that your idea is one of the better ones they've heard, and they're going to put it on the short list. All right, our next speaker is local citizen Colin Michaels. Uh, uh, um. 
uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen, dis distinguished members of the, sorry, is this, is this, is it on? It is on, Mr. Michaels. Please tell us what your proposal is to improve our municipal calendar. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, uh, distinguished members of the council, Deborah, uh, all of my uh, opponents, I've, I don't know how to refer to them. I would just say fellow idea havers. Fellow idea havers have all had wonderful ideas today and I wish to present something a little more um, pedestrian. Oh, that sounds refreshing um, and achievable. So the idea is uh, one that has been discussed many times. The length of months is confusing and I wish to unify all of the months so they all have 30 days and 30 times 12 is 360, which is like a circle. And that's how time works, is it works in a circle. And the length of a day will be set by the number of hours in a day, but we will recalculate how an hour should be represented so that it, it hang on, is metric. We will we will uh, uh, we will change the clocks so that it works more with metric time. Uh, an idea put forward by the French in the 1790s. It's, a, it's, it's eight, 1760s in the in the 18th century uh, because I believe that that will establish uh, order. Um, and you might be asking yourself, but the length of a solar year is 365 and a quarter days. The quarter we add up into a leap day to be taken every four years. And the leap days uh, we would abandon entirely. That extra five and a quarter days would simply become a rutting fest among all citizens. You can do what your heart feels and be the freak that you definitely are. Uh, I, for one, will find a way to uh, just express my inner being uh, all, all over my front lawn. Now, um, one of our previous suggestions um, had to do with the impact of the calendar on children. What would children and those who do not wish to partake in this communal activity do during these five days? Uh, children will not be allowed to be within the city limits. For five days, we will have to, uh, the extra and the quarter. I don't want to leave that out because I think it's important. And I think we will just have to um, build a facility uh, for anybody under the age of majority, some sort of teen center. And we can just pack them all in there with uh, video games and low doses of marijuana. Why did I write that? What a fascinating proposal. Do you have anything else that you want to clarify or add to it? I'm forming a club. Uh, you can bring your own latex, but I will also provide a vat of it at the door. Oh, that is very exciting sounding, I'm sure to someone out there. Um, if any citizens are interested in your um, club or activities, they can contact you directly, correct, Mr. Michaels? Yes, Deborah. I am on America Online, and you can find me in the more experimental chat rooms. Uh, it's just Colin underscore Michaels. All righty. Well, thank you, Mr. Michaels. That was a very detailed proposal, and I've gotten a note from the mayor, and he says, oh, that he'd like you to write down your email address and give it to him personally. All righty. Well, we are going to have to take a short break now in our public forum while we have a recess so people can attend to their biological needs. I know I need a snack 
and a cold shower. But uh, do not let that stop you from tuning in to CFUT's Christmas special, hosted by Bacon Rothersworth and his weird robot girlfriend thing. Thank you very much. I have been Deborah Thibodeau, and this has been Local Politics with Deborah Thibodeau. Celebrate Christmas in December this December at Dulcimer Warehouse. Pick up gifts for everyone on your list by shopping the Tri-City's largest selection of factory second dulcimers, zithers, and auto harps. Or save up to 30% on pre-owned instruments like the Suzuki Omnicord OM300, named Tetracord Magazine's 1995 Instrument of the Year, three years running. Put a smile on everyone's face with buy one, get one free deals on our entire selection of tuners, strings, bows, anchor pins, and even ball ends. Or bring home a gift for the whole family by pre-ordering the new AX Bouquetotron. Shop two convenient locations or visit us online at www.dulcimerwarehouse.blogspot.conk. Dulcimer Warehouse. We hammer the competition, not your wallet. Yes. It's time for Piff's semi-annual liquidation sale. Save on all liquid items, including Piff's Select and Piff's Choice. Save up to 60% compared to other national liquid brands. Piff's. It's Piff's. No frills. No gimmicks. No barrels. Bring your own. Our famous Door Crasher specials start at 7. Doors unlocked at 8. Choosing to buy anywhere else is like choosing to buy anywhere else. Piff's. It's Piff's. Hello and welcome to Quisario's Astro News, your one-stop shop for all space news. It's once again time for our annual holiday special where we track and engage Santa on his globe-spanning Christmas Eve flight. After last year's proof of concept, we've been able to modify the station's radio frequency transmitter. Using the unparalleled computing power of my own TRS-80, we've been able to convert the station into a phased radar array capable of tracking, engaging, and locking onto Santa's coordinates before feeding them to a Navy surplus 40mm autocannon. I'm receiving word that Santa has crested the horizon and we are steering the beam to acquire him. Suck 8 kilowatts of local interest programming, you jolly old bandit! Go ahead. We have acquired Santa and are locking on. Wait, what, what do you mean the target's geometry is changing? No sleigh like that has variable geometry. Unless he's using the reindeer to modulate the returning signal. No, no, he could use it to backhack us. That would give him access to the television broadcast. Got the power. Warning. Ho, ho, ho. This was just a warning. Warning, warning. Warning. Ho, ho, ho. Oh. Welcome back! I was just adjusting Lindex based on the possible outcome of the political debate. What a waste of time. Why not simply count down seconds until the singularity... Sorry. I mean, what an inspiring debate. Indeed. Well, it's almost time for us to say goodnight. But first... More music. So, say hello to the CFUT house band. Lindex and I have had so much fun tonight. 
I do not experience fun, but Bacon seems to have enjoyed himself, so I will say we were simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Lindex, I did not know you had such a lovely singing voice. Oh, thank you. Lindex, look above you. I physically cannot. Well, before the show started, I asked the stage manager if they could hang some mistletoe from the lighting grid. They said, and I quote, you know, but I suggest we pretend there's some anyway. Quick bacon before the director shakes his head again. Mwah. Mwah. Happy holidays, everyone. Coming up later this week on CFUT. It's the year-end wrap-up of Beef Report. Quint and Lulu get festive with Twelfth Night Super f***. It's the season finale of Boat. They've learned how to use a computer and are trying to help. The Love Doctors go online. No one can escape the mirth of Tittle's Happy Time. And of course, settle in at the end of the month for New Year's Steve. All this and more on CFUT. I'm tired, Santa. Ready to be hung back up like that old piece of tinsel that never stays on the tree. Oh, I have a feeling you'll be back. Oh, 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 oh.